Hey, y'all. <laughs> Happy Friday night. Friday. We're up in church. It's a rainy, cold day, but um, that doesn't stop us, okay? So welcome to Kingdom Harvest, uh, Friday Night Lights. We are spreading the gospel light of Jesus. Um, thank you so much. Tonight is um, a teaching on identity in Christ, your identity. I want to first say thank you um, to my mama because she's here and then i want to say thank you to pastor russell and pastor Lori for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight and united church for um just being amazing so let me get um to praying and then we're gonna start right i'm just gonna preach my message i got for y'all um lord thank you for tonight lord thank you for um getting us all here safely Lord, use me. Um, I'm a yielded vessel to you, Father. Give us ears to hear, eyes to speak, uh, eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, calm all my nerves, Lord. Um, I'm teaching tonight on your identity in Christ. So the first thing that um, you should write, because you're taking notes, right, is have a Bible. You got to have a Bible to know who you are, right? Um, our Bible is our love letters from home. This is the only book that the author will read to you if you ask him to. So um, they're just not words. They are life from the creator of life. And um, all you need is the Holy Spirit of this word, and that'll transform you. So get a Bible. You don't need anything else. You don't need like a title. You don't need um, prestige. You don't need a degree. You just need Jesus, the scriptures, and um, he qualifies you. He and he alone will qualify you, right? So the word says, Matthew 7, 7, ask and the gift is yours. Seek and you will discover. Knock and the door will be open for you. But do you want him? But that does not say that in the Bible. My, my question to you is, do you want him? Um, the key to unlock these scriptures is your heart posture towards him. So just to recap real quick, what Pastor Russell Ham spoke on last Friday was um, your identity, but how in Christ we were, um, we died, we were buried, and then we were resurrected, right? So when we got saved, um, our old nature, our carnal mind died and was buried. It was dead, dead, and buried, buried. So our new spirit rose with a new nature, and that is now God's nature, right? So when you rise with Christ, you rise with God's nature. It is his likeness, and we are restored back to God. As in the garden, as if Eve never ate the fruit. That is the message that we're preaching tonight. We are restored back. We are redeemed because of what Christ did for us. Um, he took out our heart of stone and gave us a heart of flesh. And that is a beautiful thing. Um, can't really explain that situation because God designed it that way. <laughs> he, it is supernaturally done. Um, you are no longer a natural person. You are a supernatural being. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit later, but yes. Um, so now we can be baptized with water and the spirit because God has, Jesus has finished the work on the cross for us. Um, Romans 6, 4, NLT. For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives that is goodness that is good that's the gospel message that's the new that's the um the good news that we have a brand new life we are a new creature um the old is gone the new has come um baptism is so symbolic and i honestly didn't know about baptism um when i got baptized and <laughs> so i just want to share a little bit of my testimony about being baptized so I had been going to church for like a year and, you know, they were like, you should get baptized if you haven't been baptized. So I was like, great, I'll get baptized. I was on my journey with God. It was about a year. So um, I was like, okay, I'll get baptized. 
And when I went to go get baptized, um, there was like a line, right? And as I was walking up to the water, I just started feeling this heaviness, like this, and now I know that it was the presence of God, but at the time I had no idea. I was a brand new baby Christian. So I'm, I'm like walking up to the water and as I'm getting closer and closer to the water, it's like I almost couldn't, um, I, I'm, I'm feeling it now, like I couldn't breathe. I could barely walk. I was shaking like this. And so I, I could barely get in the water. So when I got in the water, right, I was like, I, I was like, I'm going to drown because they're going to put me back and I can't breathe. I was shaking so bad. Right. And then I, I did it. God did it. Right. We, we went down together. And then when I came back up, I was I, I can't explain it to you because it was a supernatural experience. But I breathed the freshest air that I've ever breathed ever. And I was a former smoker. So I had just quit smoking cigarettes like six months previously. And so when I tell you, like, my lungs filled, it was just, like, so much life. Um, I'm sorry I get choked up because it was such um, an experience. It was an encounter for sure, probably my first encounter with him. Anyway, so I pray that you all have a supernatural encounter um, of baptism for joy or for if you need to be baptized. Let us know, right, right in the comments or um, come see us. Because we want to baptize you. Um, yes, moving forward. So I don't know about any of you guys, but like the gospel message about being a new person, being a clean person, being new and all of your old, right, being died, um, being, being buried was just something that appealed to me because of my current situation where I was in life, what I was doing in life. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely had some things that needed to be buried and dead. <laughs> so the gospel message was so, um, it was so alive to me. I was like, yes, that's what I want, right? So I was the woman at the well previously before I got saved. I was the woman with the issue of blood. I was the woman caught in adultery. I was a liar. I was a thief and a cheater, but God right? But God, he showed up when I called on him in one of my darkest days. I cried out, Jesus, if you're real, show me who you are. Um, and I was so, I was so lost. I, at the time when I said those words, y'all was sitting on my front porch, I was smoking weed. I was so high when I said those words, but I was such in a dark, empty place that it was just, it was almost like I had to say those words, right? Because there was nothing else to say because I had done all the things I had, I had, I had been all the places, right? And, and none of nothing else, nothing was satisfying me. So I cried out those words and how many people know, right? God will show up in your deepest, darkest place. He was born in a manger. So he is not scared to show up anywhere, right? He will show up anywhere. He will show up to your drug party. He will show up to your um, just sin, your sin. He will show up if you call on him, if you ask for him. The word said, I just read it, knock and he will open the door for you. So that's part of my testimony. Um, he will just show up in the, in the ugly places. And so that's part of the free gift from him. That's what makes him so amazing, right? Because who else can tell you that? Who else can share that story with you? Um, God's gift is free and he will give it to you whenever and wherever. And that is why it's so important for us as believers to intersect people's lives with the truth of the gospel. It can go anywhere at any time and God will show up, right? Do you want him? That's the question. Do you want him? I was one way and I'm completely different. And the only thing that changed was him. The only thing that changed was him. It's, you know, a Friday night, seven o'clock, seven, almost seven thirty. Like previously, I would have been getting ready to go to the club. I'd have been getting ready to get my money together to buy my drinks and get my weed together. Right. And like, and Lord, um, not Lord, but what do you got for me tonight? Just looking to see what I could get into. And how many people know, like, when you want to get into something, the devil will let you get up into something. Okay. So none of those things satisfied me. None of those things, they always brought me back to an empty place. 
and now here here we are tonight at church Amen. and um with church folks so <laughs> thank you lord for that thank you for that lord um but that is why it's so important for us to intersect people right um we're new creations the only thing that changed was him he will set you free but do you want him your part um your part as a believer is to learn your new identity in christ right who you are if you want to become something you learn all that there is to know about that thing right so like a doctor an astronaut or a chef those are all things i wanted to be when i was little but you would have to learn how to be that thing you would have to study you would have to um you would have to give time right to those things so that's what you have to do as a christian if you are a christian and you want to become a christian right you have to dedicate your life to the thing reading the word this is how you become it so um this is called also called mind renewal so we must learn who we are um, by renewing our mind your spirit becomes perfect at salvation but you must learn the things of god and apply them to your life you must learn who you are in your position right there is um therefore if anyone is in christ and i'm reading the amplified so it's extra like me <laughs> therefore if anybody is in christ that is grafted in joined to him by faith in him as savior he is a new creature reborn and renewed by the holy spirit the old things the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away behold new things have come because spiritual awakening brings new life that's second corinthians 5 17 amplified all right you are a new creation but do you know your position your position is not your current condition yeah. boom yeah. all right so i'm about to read a lot of i'm about to read a lot of scripture so i'm gonna read it slow and i'm gonna read it from the amplify because it just it just expounds so much on the word right so here you go listen up hebrews 10 12 through 25 amplify <clears throat> Whereas Christ, <clears throat> sorry, whereas Christ having offered the one sacrifice, the all sufficient sacrifice of himself for sins for all time, he sat down signifying the completion of atonement for sin at the right hand of God, a position of honor, waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. For by the one offering, he has perfected forever and completely cleansed those who are being sanctified. Bring in each believer to spiritual completion and maturity. Boom. And the Holy Spirit also adds his testimony to us in confirmation of this. For after having said, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will imprint my law upon their heart and in their mind and i will inscribe them producing an inward change that is what happens to you he then says and their sins and their lawless acts i will remember no more no longer holding their sins against them who needs some of that now there is an absolute forgiveness and complete cancellation of the penalty of these things there is no longer any offering to be made to atone for sin talking about Jesus y'all therefore believers since we have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place the place where God dwells by means of the blood of Jesus by this new and living way which he has initiated and opened for us through the veil as though the holy of holies that is through his flesh and since we have a great and wonderful priest Jesus who rules over the house of God let us approach God with a true and sincere heart and unqualified assurance, that unqualified assurance part, having had our hearts sprinkled clean from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is, is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. And let us consider 
thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together. As believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the while more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. We could go home after that, y'all. But um, that is just so good. That's one of my favorite. That's one of my favorite. So um, look at all of us here, y'all, and look at y'all online. Not forsaking the meeting together. We're in church on a Friday, but we are here encouraging one another, right? Because the world is dark and the streets need our love, and they need our Jesus. They need our Jesus. Here's the chaser to what I just read. Ready? Colossians 1.15. Here it goes. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme above all creation. For through him, God created every, everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things that we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities, and the unseen world. And everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all, to, all creation together. Christ is the head of the church, which is the body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. He designed it that way. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. Here we go, y'all. Somebody get an organ or something ready. Ready? <laughs> he made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by the means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and your actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. Ready? You are holy and you are blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe the truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you have received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, I, Suzanne, I, LaShawn, I, Renee, have been appointed as God's servants who proclaim it. That's our job, y'all. We are reconciled to Christ. That is our identity. There is nothing. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Somebody raise a flag for me. <clears throat> yes. Oh, I wish y'all could see the flags, though. Your identity. He will remember your sins no more. We have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place. Our hearts have been sprinkled clean. Our bodies are washed with pure water, and we have been reconciled to him, and we are holy and blameless. Catch these things. This is who you are. This is your position in Christ. Your walk with Christ is your walk, and it is your journey. You can, Hold back the tears. You cannot compare it to other believers' walk, right? Each of us is different and unique and beautiful to him, but we all have the same identity, right? We have 20 identities, y'all. <clears throat> it's the same Jesus. It's the same Holy Spirit. We all have that, but yet we are still very unique. And that is precious to God. He made us this way. Look at all the things. There's a variety of everything. God loves the variety, right? I like a variety. Um, I like a charcuterie board, okay? Like, I, I like it. He likes it too, y'all. He likes, he likes the variety. But his body is made up of all the different looking parts, but we all fit together as in a masterpiece, right? He, we are his masterpiece. We are one with Christ, Galatians 3.28. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ. We're one, y'all. We have a, a, the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. We can think like him, right? We have the mind of Christ. We can think like him. We have 1,400 40 minutes, 24 hours, seven days a week, access to him. That's every single minute, every second, right?
right? We have access to him. He's never going to tell us, hold on, like we tell our kids to hold on. You know what I'm saying? He is never going to tell us to hold on. He's going to, he's right there. He is right there. He is a present, right? <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from him. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13. So we cannot fake the funk with Jesus, y'all. He knows. He knows that ugliest part of me, he knows all the things that I've done, right? But he was like, I still want you. And that is so freeing to me. That set me free, y'all. <sighs> that set me free. Um, what are you doing with him, right? What do you look like when they see you if everything is naked and exposed before him? And he, to him is the one to whom we are accountable. We should always live our life with an audience of one. Who cares how many likes? Who cares how many shares? What does Jesus say about what you're doing? Because he sees it all. What is he going to say to you? Is he going to say, well done, well done. I gave this to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the one we have to please. I'm so sorry, guys. <clears throat> Galatians 5.13, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love, for the whole law can be summed up with this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. I'm jumping to 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, and dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. You could turn on the news and see that right now, like right at this very second. Thank you, Bill. Um, but for us, right? Those sins were buried with him. They were buried with him. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? That's Galatians 5. There is no law with these things. Jesus, me and Jesus are working on self-control, y'all. Um, we got the other ones. <laughs> so self-control. Come on, neighbor, anybody? Is there anybody out there? Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. <sighs> your identity, your position, you are wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. Andrew Womack said that, and it's always stuck with me. You are wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. You are full of love, you are full of joy, and you are full of peace. You are full of patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Nothing works against the nature of God. He is the creator and he reigns supreme. We just read that. He reigns supreme. This is who you are. 1 Corinthians six seventeen. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. It's sharper than the two-edged sword, right? That's what the word says. But if we're one with him, you know what I'm saying? That's probably not a really good example. But y'all know what I'm y'all know where I'm going. You might not know where you are going with the Lord, but know that the Lord is with you. Amen. He <laughs> Say 
Yes, you might not know. Oh, we're going to put a praise on that one. You might not know where you're going with the Lord, but he is with you. He has assured us of his presence, Psalm 116.9 NLT. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. Boom. It's with us. So who are you walking with? Right? One of the first things I had to do when I got saved was change the people I was around. I had lots of friends. Everybody wanted to party. Everybody wanted to go out at night, right? And and hang out and do these things, right? Even during the week, y'all, on a school night, people wanted to go out and, and party, right? I was I was that girl. So that's one of the things that I um I had to let go of. And some people left me and some people stayed around, but they were always people luring me back. There was always somebody this is what you want. You know, we had so much fun, blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay. So the devil's always there. You got to fight that resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him and he will flee from you. I no longer wanted those things. And I wanted to consecrate myself, right? When you get radically set free from things that made you empty inside, you can no longer go back to those things. You can no longer go back to them. I, I was just at a party a few weeks ago. It was family. So I had to be there but they were all doing all the things, right? That the former me used to do. And I sat there and I was just, I grieved for them. I grieved for the fact that they thought that they needed those things to be happy and to have a good time because I was there and I was at the party and I was alive and I was full of party, but I was not on drugs. I didn't have to have a sip of anything to be fun, to have fun. I was there, life is inside of me. I'm exuding life. Right. And so I just I, I agree for those people. Um, I'm not judging them. I'm just saying, wow, get free, get free from all those things. You don't need that. Jesus is all you need for real. Jesus is all you need. So you have to walk away from those things. And I, I feel like everybody has to have a wilderness experience because you have to get away from that. You have to, you know, God has to get one on one time with you. That's how you build il- intimacy. Right. When you don't know the Father, you can listen to lies. When you intimately know God, when a lie comes, you're going to know that that's not from him because you've been spending time with him. You have been communing with him, speaking with him, praying to him, you know, having him love on you. It's not just, you know, a monologue. This the prayer is a back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Like when you know God and his nature and what he is, the enemy cannot lie to you because you are immediately going to say, that is counterfeit. That is not from my father. That is from the father of lies, right? But you have to spend time with him. You have to get in his face to realize that, to know that. So um, let me figure out where I was, y'all. Oh, your friends matter, right? Mark 2, Jesus healed the man, right? Because of his friend's faith. Y'all know who I'm talking about? They busted up in that room, in, in, in the roof, let their friend down. So your friends matter, absolutely. What are your friends doing for you? Well, they bust hell wide open so you can get free, so you can get healed. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's the only kind of people you should be um, rolling with. So anyway... <laughs> Sorry, sorry, that was <laughs> for real though. Are you being fed faith or are you being fed fear? Right? What are people around you speaking to you? Because it matters. Your friends matter. <clears throat> there were so many scenes in my life where I didn't have any friends at all, where, like I was saying, they would always try to woo me back. They would always want to go do these things and go see this movie and go go drinking here, go doing this. And, and, and the natural is like, eh, I guess you could do it. You can, you could be there, but it just got to the point in my life where I was like, I can't even look at those things. They don't bring me pleasure. You know, like why would I bring, I'm bringing God everywhere I go. Right. Does he need to be at a bar? Unless that is your calling and God wants you to go to a bar and says, go to the bar. 
there's really no reason for you to be there. there there's nothing there for you, right? There's nothing there for you um, at the strip joint. There's nothing there for you um, at a party where you know everybody's doing drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I keep repeating that, but I'm just saying that was my life, y'all. And I will sit by myself now, and I'm perfectly okay with that. In the beginning, it really did hurt. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It really did hurt that I was by myself. But it was just like one of those things where I had to ask God to fill those empty places. He And he will because that's what he wants for you. He wants all of you. And he will consume all of you if you give it to him. And all of those things like don't even mean anything to me. Like I said, I grieve now for people like that because I'm just like, wow, I used to be like that. If anything, it'll get me completely wrecked with the love of God. And now he completely transformed me and how I used to be like that. And I can't even recognize me like that. I can't even think, oh my gosh, y'all used to smoke cigarettes like a lot. Like I used to have to smoke weed all the time just, just to know my mind. I don't, I can't even register with that because I'm a new creation. Uh, anyways, um, back to your friends. So the Lord will give you beauty, beauty for ashes, right? The joy for mourning. And um, I just want to say that God has completely changed my friend group. And like for my, I just had my birthday. And when I tell you that I felt so loved, so supported. Um, Lori is one of those people. Renee is one of those people. And I just felt like, wow, Lord, I can't believe that I would have friends like I do that love me so well that when we have conversations, y'all, they're so deep. They're not just like, I, I don't want to talk about our conversation. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Wow, like I'm 41 and I just have this most amazing group of women um, that God has sent me and I truly believe he sent me. So I do pray that if you need a new friend group, ask God for it. I have prayed for mentors. I have prayed for people to come into my life that would edify me, that would lift me up, that would encourage me. And that's exactly what I have. So your friend group should look something like this. Like you should always have women for men, uh, for men and women, like as me as a woman, you should always have women that are ahead of you that are running, right? They're way further than you because they're going to bring you along. And then you, right, you're there. And then you should always have people that are kind of doing the same. They're running with you, right? You're pulling them along, right? And so, and that's the circle. That's the circle that God has for us. That's discipleship. That's like, women are pouring into you you're pouring into women and and that's the best thing it's the most healthy and it, it just it there's so many rewards there's so much good fruit from that so anyway discipleship is a must um one thing pastor russell and pastor Lori would always do to encourage me would be that tell me like when i would ask them a thousand questions because i would ask them a thousand questions as a new believer like um can I go do that? And they would be like, um, well, we trust the Holy Spirit in you and we think it's okay, but you know, we're going to pray for you. Like they would do that for me. And that's like the, the best thing. Cause I know in their mind, they were like, this girl's crazy. But, um, <laughs> what they have let me do is rely on the, the Holy Spirit and not them. And which is so good, but I know they were praying for me. I know that they were encouraging me, um, and bringing me alongside and, um, I know that they left me in the hands of the Holy Spirit, and that is the best place, right? When you leave someone in the hands of the Holy Spirit, catch this, y'all, because you could do it for your husband, you could do it for your friend, you could do it for your parents, you could do it for your child. When you leave people in the hands of the Holy Spirit, whew, it's, it's a dangerous thing, like, because you don't know. Right. But that means that you've surrendered that person to them. There's nothing you can do. You're not manipulating. You're not, you know, talking about them. You're you're you are saying, God, I, I know you see this. Here they are. Here we go. Silver platter. Have them. Anyways. So, um, yeah. So Lori and Russell, let me take 
super generous liberties, right? But they would always be the guardrails for me. And I'm so thankful for that in my life. Um, that And those are the kind of friends you need, right? That they're always going to put you back to Jesus, but they're there when you need them. They're safe. They're a safe place for me. And I love you guys so much. Rock on. <laughs> so listen for the Holy Spirit. Ask God to speak to you so that you know his voice because he wants a relationship with you. It is a conversation. It's not a monologue. I'm sorry if I'm going long, y'all. Am I? What time is it? Okay, so my friend Ken posted this yesterday on Facebook and it was so amazing. And I was like, sir, can I please, can I please um, speak this tonight? So he said, yes. Yeah. So from my dear friend Ken, he said, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him will not perish, but inherit eternal life. While we were yet sinners, the scripture says God loved us and he died for us. While we were in rebellion against him, disbelieving and disobedient to him, he loved us. Why? Because we are made in his image. And it is all about identity and not performance. Finding your true identity in Christ ultimately results in working the works of God. But you were loved before performing a single work. You were loved before performing a single work. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. If there is conflict between your identity and the godly work you are doing or attempting to do, your works will cease. They will die. This is why it is so critical to grow up into him in all things. As a disciple of Jesus, you can live out, you can only live out one identity, and that is the new creation born from above. Everything inside you that ascribes you to any other identity or circumstance of this life that says that you are not a new creation, any words of any person that speaks as if you are not a new creation in Christ, but instead are part of this fallen, dysfunctional, ungodly world are lies and are not to be indulged. The natural mind of man cannot grasp this. Hence, Paul in Romans commands that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put it on by faith. You are a creature made from the dust of the earth. The lineage of the first Adam and Eve were crucified with Christ and died with him on the cross of crucifixion. And now you are a new creation, born as a spiritual being from the father of all spirits. As the scripture says in Hebrews 10, 19, your life is in Jesus Christ, yet hidden from your natural mind's understanding. The scriptures hint of this where they stated, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face we will see. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully just as I have also been fully known. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 12. This is why we must renew our mind to our identity with Christ and him alone. Um, beloved, now we are children of God, and, and it is not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. 1 John 3, 2 says the carnal mind is not able to submit itself to God. Ken says this is a black and white distinction between being a new creation versus forming the old, reforming the old nature and the old man. The new creation is a walk with God by faith. That is the only life that expresses the new nature, period. All else is religious reformation of the old man, and it means nothing to God. It dies with this age. We have been crucified on the cross in Jesus. Jesus does not live again in the new heaven. Wait, 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 hold on, I read that wrong. What has been crucified on the cross in Jesus does not live again in the new heaven and the new earth. It has no entrance into eternity. That's so good. So he wrote that. I thought it was amazing. And I was like, I need to share that. That's a good nugget. Um, so this is over and over why God confirms in his word that he is not remembering the former old 
nature. He does not remember that. He does not remember what I did, right? I'm just going to read a few more scriptures, then I'm going to close out. So this is why over and over again, God says, this was your former nature. So in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isaiah 42, 25, I... I am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake, and I will remember your sins, and I will not remember your sins. 2 Corinthians 5.19 For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Hebrews 10.17 I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Last one. Psalm 102, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions for us. Can I get an amen on that one, please? That's right. Put a, wave a flag on that, right? You must know who you are and whose you are, your position in him, you are not what you used to be. Do you know your identity? Do you know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? 1 John 4, 4. Read your Bible. Become it. You have what it says you have, and you are what it says that you are. The King of Kings is living inside of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. 1 Colossians 1, 27. God has given us his word as a tool and a weapon to use against the enemy. How can you use it if you do not know it? Jesus, your faith, and his words are how we defeat this wicked world. Amen. Amen. That's my story. Can I pray real quick? Lord Jesus, seal all the scriptures in our heart, Father God. Write them on the tablets of our heart, Father Thank you, Lord, that you um, strengthen us in your word. Lord, give us the desire to come after you with everything that we have, Lord. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice to be blessed, to be healed. In Jesus' name, I speak a life over you. Amen.